This is the tale of the Fiat Part 4. Previously, we removed the seized engine from our Fiat because we were having a exceedingly hard time removing the bolts from the backside of the engine that hold on the intake. And now with the engine out of the car, this is a much easier task and we continue on our journey to figuring out why this engine won't turn over. All right, so now we can get a good look at all the bolts on this intake manifold. There is one up here on the top here. It's a 10 millimeter head on that one. And then a whole bunch on the bottom. You got one there, you see that guy? Everything's loose basically at this point. You got one there, one there, several more behind this wire loom here. And then the kicker one is up in there. You got the single one up sort of on the top side of the intake that's accessed from the bottom. I found it easiest just to remove the whole engine from the car because of the way the intake manifold is set on here. You can't remove the valve cover without removing the intake manifold first because of this one singular bolt. You see how this little brace comes out over and that attaches to the top of the valve cover. And so in order to get the valve cover off, you first have to remove the intake manifold. And this is jammed up on the back of the engine. And it's very difficult to remove this without removing the, the actual engine from the car. So this one bolt, <laughs> It necessitates, in my mind, removing the engine from the car. It just makes life easier. So check out previous videos if you're interested in all those steps and how to get to this point. There's a whole playlist on this Fiat. You can check that out. And here are the intake ports. And now we've got to remove the valve cover. We also removed this plastic piece here, which is called the fuel rail blocker. Not sure what it does, but there's two bolts there and there. There it is. All right, I've got all the bolts out. We should be able to lift this cover off of here in theory. Look at that stuff in there. And the secret hidden bolt is down in here. Got to remove that bolt too to get the head, the head cover off. In a separate video, we remove what's called the variable valve actuation assembly which is a fascinating bit of engineering and adds just another level of complexity to the head on this engine. So if you want to see that in more detail, check out that other video. I'll put a link in the description. All right, so we've got a Fiat multi-air engine here, the 16 valve out of the normally aspirated vehicle. Our goal is to get the head off of this, but first we have to remove the camshaft bearing housing. And so if you're at this point, the procedure basically is, so here's our camshaft here, right? And then at the end of this, you'd have a vacuum pump, which we've already removed that. And if you get to this step, you've already removed that. But at this point, you still may need to remove the camshaft position sensor, which is located right where this bolt is and goes into the side here like that. We've already removed that. And also the dipstick tube here for the engine oil that attaches onto the side here. And you're gonna wanna unattach that and remove that as well, which we've already done that as well on this guy. And then while we're over here, you can kind of see the separation here between the camshaft bearing housing, which is this guy up here, this layer, and then the actual cylinder head is this guy down here. You can see the separation line right there between the two. So we're removing this top one here right now. And so the bolt sequence for the camshaft bearing housing is up here. I'll show you where the bolts are. We've got 10 bolts on this thing. You can see them up here. They're all like Torx, it's a T45, Torx head 45 on these. So there's one there, one there, there, there. There's a couple in the middle. There's one right there. Another one on the other side, same sort of position right there. And then in the bottom, we've got one, two, three, four, total of 10. There's a removal sequence for this. And on this camshaft bearing housing, the sequence is basically working from the outside in. It sort of starts from these two middle ones and then sort of works our way in from there. And so I'll post the sequence right here, numbering from one, the first step to 10, the last step. All right, so first one here, second one over here, third one, so over here, fourth one, All right, so in theory, the head should come off now. 
see if we tap it with our little rubber mallet. Loosen up there. All right, it's definitely loose. Let's see if we can pull this off. There we go. <laughs> so there it is. Look at that thing, huh? Camshaft bearing housing. That is it. All right, now it's starting to look like a cylinder head to me. This is what I expect. We've got our valves and our valve springs, our little valve retainers, all that stuff on here. So this is the cylinder head. We're finally to the cylinder head. And now it's time to get this off of here. All right, so our procedure for removing the head, there are a couple more steps at this point before we actually undo the bolts on this. Mainly over here, we've got all of our coolant stuff. This is our thermostat housing right here. Your thermostat's right in here. There is, we've got to disconnect this guy, which is the oil cooler return line. This guy gets disconnected right here. There's another Torx head, it looks like, on that guy. We've got this, this goes to our radiator. We can disconnect that. I'm not going to on this one because this one is already disconnected up here where it would have gone to the actual radiator. So I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna leave on as much as I can. Uh, we want to disconnect this guy here, which I've already done when I removed this engine from the car. This goes to the, the coolant bottle. Disconnect that line. We've also got this line here that goes to the heater core. So this goes right to the firewall of the car and goes inside the car. Mine is already disconnected over there because I removed that engine from the car. And then we've got to disconnect this. This is the engine coolant temperature sensor. Disconnect that guy as well. And the other thing the manual wants to remove is this guy here. There's just a bolt, a bolt back there, and that should come off. I'm gonna try not taking it off at this point. I'm trying not to remove any more than I have to because I don't think this is connected to anything but at that one bolt, so it should come off with the head, in theory. All right, then this connector here, it is oriented so that the little connection, the little part you have to mess with is on the bottom. So this yellow tab, of course, pulls back. And then I had to get in here with a screwdriver and sort of pull this little tab here down in order to get this out. All right, so again, there's a sequence to removing these bolts. We're basically working from the outside in on this one. And there's 10 Torx head bolts on these and they're all T50. So we moved up a size. It's a little bit bigger than the previous ones. Torx had 50 on these, and there's 10 total bolts holding this head on. And I'll put the bolt removal pattern up here to check out. One from 10, one being the first bolt, 10 being the last bolt that you remove. I'm using my breaker bar because these are on there tight. All right, so now all our head bolts are loose on here. I should be able to remove this head now. Get my little mallets. There, it's loose. Should be able to pick this up now, all the way off. That guy. There we go. Oh, look at those pistons. Look at that. All right, so this is the mystery and the moment we've been waiting for. We can finally see these pistons. Let's see what's shaking down here. We've got some fluid sitting on these cylinders. This one cylinder, there's no fluid. It looks effed to me. Like that piston looks messed up. But right, let's see what the other ones look like. I'm gonna siphon that fluid off and we'll take a look. All right, so this is really interesting. It's bad for me but interesting to look at. And take this with the knowledge that I am not a like engine builder. I don't really know a whole lot about this stuff or what I'm even looking at here. I do know some stuff though, so let's go with that. There's a little bit of junk in there or whatever, but nothing crazy. Not looking too bad. You can see the cylinder wall is, everything is not too bad in here. And then we've got like the piston. You can see this is a whole piston. This piston looks good. It's everything it should be. And then we get over here to this piston, and you might notice that the bottom part of the piston is missing. And so, not so good on this one. Check that out. This is the part that I 
I don't have enough experience looking at stuff like this to know what happened here, right? Like, cause there's a chunk of the piston missing, but it's like, why is it missing? It looks like this is probably like a cast piston or something and a piece of it broke off possibly, but the edges and everything are so smooth. I'm like, did it melt? Did this piston just start to melt? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is there, but very interesting to look at. You can kind of see the ring below that, the piston ring below it there, creating a little bit of a ledge, but then you can also see there's a gap. You can see all the way down to the bottom of the, of the engine here. If you check out a previous video, we were playing with this engine trying to get some fluid into these things. I put evapor rust, I put transmission fluid, penetrating oil in here to try and get this thing unseized because I was hoping that there was just some rust. I think it's it's clearly a, a it's clearly a bigger story than that. But we had this one cylinder where it just lost fluid. The fluid just disappeared and went somewhere. Where these ones they went down, but they clearly were when we opened up the head here just a minute ago, you could see there was fluid in all the other, the three other pistons. They clearly had lost some fluid, but it was because I was filling it so much, it was going out like the exhaust. These other three, possibly salvageable, but this one piston, psh, no good. And it's not just the piston. I think the piston, the piston wall over here is not so good looking. And, a, and overall, the whole piston wall in general, much rustier in here. And you might be able to to hone that out, but I think there's some gouging and stuff over here in the bottom. I think this engine is toast. It's not worth doing much else with it. And probably most wiser people would have stopped far before I had stopped here, but I'm a curious fella and I wanted to know what was keeping this engine from, from rotating. I'm gonna move on to our, nut, our other engine, which we have sitting over here behind our little red cart. There's another whole nother Fiat engine, this guy here. So this is my other Fiat engine. This is one I took, there's a previous video on taking this out at the junkyard. And I know this one rotates and is in better condition than our other engine. But before we just throw this in the car, I wanna check it out, check the compression on it and everything, make sure this is in good shape, make sure we don't have to put a new head gasket in, et cetera, on this engine. So that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching this video and keep on wrenching everybody on your own projects. All right, and out of curiosity, let's take a look at the valve, see if there's anything that tells uh, you know completes the story with these valves this would be the piston that we had that is damaged and we look at the valves on here nothing appears to me to be crazy you don't see anything obviously bent or broken on there the valves definitely could be bent if we took them out of there and have a better look at them at least not to me i don't see anything